Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Welcome to Dumb SEO Questions, episode 376. Each week, yeah, we meet here to review the questions and answered, uh, answers uh, on the Dumb SEO Questions Facebook group. With us tonight, we have uh, David Rosam. David uh, is a leading internet marketer. He's based in West Sussex on the sunny side of the UK. Um, David uh, can be found at davidrosam.com. And Masataki Wasa is webmaster of wasaweb.net. He uh, is based uh, in Wimbledon, in, uh, in a suburb of London. Um, and uh, Masataki is also a Google product expert in the AdSense uh, community. All right, we have 12 questions tonight, uh, and uh, the um, first one is, um, it's titled, is anyone willing to share their thoughts um, on a content uh, randomizer? Scott Henderson asked, uh, he said, I'm trying to get the opinion of multiple SEO professionals before I share my own thoughts with them. And I'm hoping you'll participate. After being asked to look at a website, I found that they were happily using a WordPress plugin with a monthly fee called Content Randomizer. Um, it's in telesoftplugins.com slash SEO dash content dash randomizer forward slash, which has given them well over 4,000 um, landing pages, one for pretty much every city and town they could possibly serve. How about it, guys? Um, I think the I think the answer um, comes out several um, pages down. If you scroll down, um, uh, apparently this uh, this site gets naught to five clicks a day. From search and occasionally seven or eight. Now this is to over four thousand pages. Um, yes, it's clearly not doing anything at all for you or for the site um, organically, um, and possibly without actually seeing the site, I would I would hazard a guess that uh, the pages being um, created will not be a good read in other words they won't be a good uh, user experience if you want to put it in that sort of terminology um so i would call that a waste of time and money thank you yes i i i i'd have to agree um and uh, most people like roger monty uh, um he uh, um yeah excellent. i'm not sure exactly what roger said there but i'm sure he'll be right all right let's go to the next one number two on our run list google got it right but bing and yahoo got it wrong that's what keeps me up at night david uh, someone is always wrong on the internet um really oh you you must give me some links to them <laughs> yes, that's why you never sleep <laughs> derek wilcox uh, uh is he, can, can someone help me figure out why my page description i have set for search results shows up right on google and ask but wrong on yahoo and bing he said i use rank map for my wordpress site uh, is this because rank math is not working correctly or why or what my uh, page description for search results is supposed to say a top rated CBD store store dash lab uh, pipe uh, lab tested products pipe we take the time to save you money and get you the right products uh, for you personally pipe money back guarantee which is what shows up on google or ask 
Um, a bit on Big and Yahoo. It says the mass apothecary. Oh, oh, oh dear. Um, Derek, if you would like to send me a, um, a link, I'll, I'll be happy to look at this for you. Um, now, guys, um, what, what are your thoughts on this? Um, I, th I think there's there's a general feeling uh, amongst lots of website owners that if they put something in uh, the description tag or even the title tag, um, that's what the uh, the search engines are are bound to uh, to post, um, and they can do what they like, um, and indeed they do what they like. Um, so that what's happening with um, Google or no, uh, Bing and Yahoo, uh, no, the other way around. Whichever one's got the uh, um, got got uh, the, what you want to say. Uh, no, the ones that didn't get didn't put what you wants to say um, are just doing their their thing. The the other thing that I would hazard a guess without actually counting these um, the the number of um, the number of characters that looks pretty long to me um and if it is too long i think you've got a, a far bigger chance of the search engine ignoring what you're trying to say and doing their own thing um i actually think that um um that what it's supposed to say is worse than what's turning up um, the top rated C CBD store pipe, lab testing products pipe. Um, I I'd rather have uh, the mass apothecary, blah, 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 personally. But you can't. The, the, the story is you cannot tell <coughs> the search engines what to do. They do what the hell they like. Yeah. <laughs> and they change depending on the query as well. So, you know. I wouldn't worry too much about it, but give the description, the best description possible that you can provide, and then allow search engines to do their job. Yes, um, we interrupt this program to let you know that uh, Winston's dad has joined us. Um, <laughs> Uh, Tim oh, is uh, really an SEO based in Corby, a hundred miles north of uh, London. He's also a Google My Business, uh, a Google My Business product expert. Sorry, Tim, I, I talked over the top of you. I, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I wasn't saying anything, Jim. I was saying <laughs> you. <laughs> <laughs> I was commenting that Tim looked all fluffy tailed this week. But it's probably not worth repeating. Yeah. Yeah. I need a haircut so badly. It's just getting out of. I'm even getting a mullet, man. Look at that. I'm getting a mullet. Everybody's. Um, most people are glad that they've got hair at all, Tim. Anyway, uh, thank thank you, uh, Masataki. Thank you, Derek. As uh, th thank you for your question, and uh, thank you, uh, um, David, for your answers, and Ben Masataki, of course. All right, let's go to the next. Um, Marie Sa, lovely name. Um, she said, "What am I missing to get my pages ranked higher?" Uh, Marie said, hi all, what am I missing to get in my pages ranked higher? I put a keyword strategy in place and created some great content around it. I'm having a hard time getting organic backlinks. Uh, my page speed is on point. The keywords I have targeted have uh, SD, what's that? Um, um, I don't know, SD, what's the, the, that one stand for? Uh, most of my content is on page 20 or above, which is uh, frustrating. Is there a tool that I should be using to see um, which similar content is ranking high? And if so, do you have a free tool suggestion?
Um, so, hang on, I'm confused. What's she saying? She's saying something about her speed. Um, what's going on here? I can't get this thing to stop. It's, no, she's no, asking no. What, why her content isn't, uh, isn't ranking um, because she's uh, done lots of good things. And, okay. And, and, uh, well, but, do we know? Do we know what her 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 domain is? No. Right. Uh, Mari, um, can you tell us what your domain is? We can have a look, and then maybe we can give you some more insight. Uh, tips on how to get this out there a bit more. Um, yeah, yeah, good point, Tim. All right. Um, it, it could be, too, just a, a matter of time, uh, Mari. Uh, quite often uh, um, things don't happen immediately. Um, it could just be a, a matter of time. Anyway, let's move on to the yeah, next. Sorry, just interrupting before you go. Um, John Muller said something interesting that I uh, I saw sometime during the la last week, which was about new sites. I don't know if this is a new site, but he said that you cannot, uh, that, that it takes Google up to a year to actually figure out how good the site is. So you're liable to see quite significant um, fluctuations over the first 12 months of the site being live. Now, I would perhaps guess that this is a new site. Maybe Mary is uh, suffering from some of this Google hesitancy to actually work out what, what the site's about and whether it's any good. Yeah. Thank you, David. Okay, let's go to the next. Uh, Chris Karun, uh, uh, he said, what will you do to get the best search engine optimization for this photo? Uh, Chris said, newbie question, uh, if I'm using this photo, what are the essential things to do for uh, SEO? Um, he said, can the title and alternative text be the same? Uh, and if, if it were you, how will you do the best SEO for this photo? Or is, is he just um, wanting us to uh, um, learn some 1167? So, so I'm assuming that the page was something to do with Psalm 1167, right? So your title would be something like, um, you know, I don't know what the title of the page was. Let's say the title of the page was actually to do with um, something takes care of you or take care of yourself or something like that. So it would be take care of you, Psalm 116, as my title, my file, right, as, as my file name, which becomes your title anyway, right? So it's take care of you, Psalm 116. Now, the alt for a screen reader is, you know, is meant for a screen reader to explain the image to, 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 uh, to people <coughs> that, that, that are possibly sight impaired. Okay. So you would then say, you know, um, you would then describe the image. It would be monkey or, or if that is a monkey or maybe it's a gorilla, I don't know, uh, it's not a gorilla, it's uh, whatever monkey. Just say monkey relaxing on log. And then you would say, you know, hyphen, relax because the Lord takes care of you, Psalm 11.7. So you're describing it completely in terms of somebody, if this had to explain it. And then, of course, I always brand in my alt attribute, and then it would be the your brand. So, so it's, you know, it's it, don't overthink this. Your title is, 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 the, is essentially your file name, how you're going to save save that file. And I would obviously be a little bit more, a bit descriptive. Lord takes care of you, Psalm 116.7, as my file name. And then the alt would be describing it. Monkey resting on a log, relax, the Lord takes care of you, Psalm 116.7, hyphen your brand name. 
So don't overthink it, but your alt should describe the image. Okay. Thank you, Tim. Anybody else? Okay, we're, we're rolling on to number five on our run list. It's um, does Google rank a website according to the website's keywords? There's a novel thought. Um, Nathan Nikolai Guidi asks, uh, he begins with hello. He says, does Google rank a website according to the website's keywords on its homepage? or according to the sitemap and homepage. My real question is, two, will adding a block on a subdomain it will be a bad idea for SEO purposes, uh, as the main website itself is very low on keywords, brackets, service provider. I'm not sure what it means by that. Is it three, uh, I currently have a blog on the same domain, um, uh, um, and I believe this is the right way to do it. Please correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, and four, can I sitemap a subdomain uh, website uh, to the main website or the subdomain website? We'll have to have its own sitemap. Thank you for the time taken reading my post. Uh, you don't need a, a blog on a subdomain if you've already got one on the main domain. It, it's just like... You don't, no, you don't need two blogs, mate. No. You've got one on your domain. Use that. Um, and the difference between having a blog on a subdomain and an actual domain, um, I would always say use it on the main domain. Typically, people use a subdomain when the main site is really full or it's, yeah, well, they have a load of different reasons for it. But no, I, I would keep it on, on your top level. Um, your sitemap doesn't doesn't have anything to do with positions or anything like that. Um, so your content should uh, your content should provide a use to to readers, right? Within that topic. And then they should be able to look at your content and go, hey, wow, you know, yeah, that solved the problem for me, or I'm still confused where, oh, look, I can click through to the service that this guy provides that is related to this, this piece of content that I read. So, so, you know, really think about your content as in, as in providing information, a resource to people that, in that kind of genre, the way you can ultimately then point them in the direction of a service that you provide, where, where if they need it, you know, think of it also that way. Um, I'm a bit concerned that you start, you just, you know, you started this question with, you know, oh, my keywords. Uh, I'm like very concerned about that <laughs> because you're ultimately thinking that if I can shove enough keywords on my home page in my content everywhere else that ultimately i'm eventually going to rank for that google is a little bit more nuanced 20 years down the line now um if if if, if you you know um if you're providing enough resource and information about that then and they feel that this is the best or some of the best stuff out there, then they're going to provide you. Um, think of it this way. Someone searches in, a, in, in for a keyword. The way Google works through it is, I mean, I, I mean, I, I, I mean I'm, not a, I'm not a data or tech, techie person, but essentially Google's going to run through all sorts of different variables on that keyword in, 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 you know, in, in, in lines. And they're going to be matching up like, Ah, there's this word, uh, you know, these domains, there's this word, this domain, there's this context behind the search query, there's all these domains. Then they, within split, you know, then they go, ah, da 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 da, and with out of, you know, all of these different breakdowns in, 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 in that word, that word, context, the use, what was the other, what was the person searching for? So it's like, you know, the, the, the context in the search, then they come up with a list of, let's say, 
10 domains or I don't know, 100 domains. Then they cross-reference for all these different usage points. And then they put it all together and provide you with the first page, top 10 results. It's not just about shoving in the keyword or words into it because it's so much more about understanding the user's intent now. Um, so when you're creating content, create it for, you know, with specific purpose for that piece of content. But ultimately, it should benefit one of your services in some way, shape or form that that user or that reader is then actually going to be contacting you. Yeah. Thank you, Tim. Um, just to pick up on one thing, and I'm not trying to disagree with uh, with people who have, com uh, who have commented here, um, but this idea of, of, um, of sitemaps, um, I thought that sitemaps had very little to, uh, to, to contribute to, to ranking. Um, but recently I, uh, I did some work on a, a small, fairly new site, which was being spidered, but not appeared to be being spidered, but wasn't ranking, not anything showing up. Um, but I found there was something wrong with the sitemap, the uh, WordPress plugin was uh, was not showing all the pages in the sitemap. So I, I gave it a prod um, and it rewrote the sitemap and lo and behold, less than a week later, it started ranking. The site started ranking. Don't know what to, uh, don't know what to say about that, but you know, it's, it's a sample of one, uh, but um, nothing else was done at that stage. Um, and we are told that uh, that shouldn't have worked. Anyway, there you go. Just threw it in. Very glad you did say it, uh, David. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's um, wander along to number six on our run list. We're halfway home. Um, let's see. This one is from Chris Green. It's titled, Will Image Source Link Give Me a Problem? Uh, Chris said, hi guys, uh, we recently discovered that one of our sites has a large number of guest posts which have an image and under the image uh, there is a source link, a, a do, fo do follow, uh, see the screenshot. The image is from the site, I'm not sure if these links are high risk since they are do follow. I, I don't think there's anything uh, anything wrong with that. Um, there are the link is attributing um, ownership of the, the image presumably, um, and you shouldn't uh, you shouldn't get any problems with that at all. Mm -hmm. Yeah. See, Michael Martin is. Um um says uh, that um oh what's wrong with me and um he said that if the images are copyrighted and not used according to fair use or a license agreement they could be used for a digital millennium copyright act takedown all right um let's uh, go to the next this is number seven on our run list it's for from Greg Jensen, it's titled Single Page Websites Are Inherently Not SEO Friendly. Don't agree with that at all. Um, dumb question for this fine Saturday. Uh, Chris, Greg said that one of our clients chose to use just a single page uh, uh, landing page um, built in Unbounce as its primary online presence mostly because they didn't want to pay the full cost for a more robust website. Uh, I understand that single page landing pages are inherently not SEO friendly and um, that's, um, uh, that's okay. But uh, during a recent update from our dev team a couple of weeks ago, the no index tag was accidentally added to the live site. 
And because of that, it has been de-indexed de for a couple of weeks. What a nightmare. Yes, I, I guess so. He said, that we removed the no index tag and I've requested in the indexing on Google and Bing by the Search Console and Webmaster Tools. Does uh, anyone have any idea how long it could take for the site to get re-indexed again? Any other tips for speeding up the process? Brackets, I can't add a sitemap, unfortunately, nor do I think it, that'll help because it's only one page. Thanks in advance. Right, there are two things here, aren't there? One is the uh, the no indexing, um, and the other is our single page websites inherently not SEO friendly. Um, the first thing is um, it could take a long time if you're unlucky to get re indexed again. Um, it's difficult to say how long. Um, I, I would have, I would hope that uh, uh, that things would come come back within a small number of weeks. But I notice that Michael Martinez is quoting a couple of sites that uh, that haven't recovered in two years. Um, I would hope that that's a real outlier, or they are a real outlier. But um, so that's a, you just have to wait. Um, the single page website's inherently not SEO friendly. Um, it's, I'd rather not work on a, a one page website. Uh, I think it's a lot easier to do good SEO on a multi, a, a multi page website. Um, the, the, um, the, the temptation with a one page website is just to put a small amount of uh, uh, of content on it, what you think is the what you want to say, and that's it. Uh, however, that might might not be competitive within the search environment. There may not be enough content on it um, for the search engines to like it and to rank you. Um, you can you can do some. You can get a lot more. Uh, content onto a site that has more pages. The if you do your content right, it'll give you a lot more leverage. Uh, I could go on, but basically, um, I don't like having to work on single page websites. Um, but um, people will tell you that they're they're fine. Thank you, David. Yeah, um, I suppose I should clarify. I mean, th th those um, sites um, where, uh, you know, th they um, have hidden divs all the way down the page and uh, hash bangs to, um, uh, to denote um, the next block of content or the next URL, they're bad. Um, for SEO, um, bad for anything. Yeah. Um, but um, gee, I've, over the years, I've seen single pages um, uh, made from plain vanilla HTML without any tricky things, bells and whistles like uh, hash bangs and, and, and that sort of stuff. Um, and uh, um, they, they perform very well. Anyway. Uh, number eight of an hour on list is uh, from Faraz Ahmed. It's titled Submitting Links in Local Business Directories. Uh, Faraz said, that is submitting in quality local business directories affect, th does that affect your Google search engine results page results uh, and search engine optimization in link building strategy? Um, brackets backlinks. Uh, what is your thought? Um, what do you think of this? Okay, so <coughs> a couple things here. Uh, I don't know what country you're in. Um, I would submit to, look, to 
depending on the country, like the UK, there is literally um, about 10 decent directories. Um, and I think there are two aggregators, three aggregators, right? So literally chuck it in the tent, do the aggregators, move on with it. After you've done those, then I would look for more, you, you, which you would need to search for is more relevant. So let's say uh, the local business is a plumbing business. Um, first, you know, check out if there are any plumbing specific directories. You want to be in those because they specifically for plumbing. Um, and then check out if there are any more niche in your area. You like real local ones. So, um, you know, the local area, the local chamber of commerce, um, the local business development part, you know, whatever in your local area might have one just for that local area. And those are also good ones. <clears throat> but I wouldn't go overboard with some of these. You know, you see all too often where people are either selling or saying, oh, yeah, I'll submit to 347 directories for you. <clears throat> when in actual fact, uh, 322 of those are pure crap. And the reason I say they're pure crap is because once you're so, and you can do it for yourself. I mean, I'm not saying don't do it. What I'm saying to you is they're not even worth the time and you can experiment. You can see this for yourself. Um, you know, take these really low down the list, third, fourth, fifth tier kind of directories, submit your business and actually check back every now and again and see how long it takes for Google to actually find and index that page on that directory. And in some cases, some cases, these third, fourth tier directories can take anywhere between six to 12 months before Google even finds it, which just shows you how little Google even visits that site and, 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 and how poorly it's run and managed. And is so in, in other words, it just won't even benefit you in any way, shape or form. Um, so that's my takeaway. Depending on what country you're in, find the, the sort of top tier. Jim, you're all over the place with that, mate. I don't know what you're um, doing. Sorry, buddy. There's that. Is that better? Yeah. But yeah, your screen's all over the show. You. I was quite enjoying it, actually. Uh, uh, so the point being is find out whatever country you're in or whatever the business you, you, you're working with is in and, 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 and just the top tier. You know, like I said, depending on the country, it could be 10 to 20 um, and maybe in the US, 30. But even the US, I would say there's only 20 because in the US then you have aggregators. I think they've got uh, five or six main aggregators. UK, we've got three which also aggregate out to further to further sort of sub sites. Do that and move on, mate. Um, don't spend don't spend a lot of time on this. Excellent, thanks, Tim. Are we right to proceed? Calling that a yes. Um, another one from Mari Sa Sa. Um, Mari said, "I didn't do anything, but my." website visitors spiked um she said i did not do anything special um except um, creating one new article what could be the cause of this uh, between june the first and today i got 22,633 users for the entire month of may i got less than 400 on average, I've been getting about 500 users. So I did, up, however, update the cache. Would they have done it? About 90% of that traffic is direct. Um, no, um, how does that uh, happen? It, one thing I, 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 I guess is, is it, I mean, this could be depending on um, what you're using to judge um, your website visitors. Um, this could be Googlebot um, visiting your site and giving it uh, a, um, a a full um, in index. Um, um, 
Yeah, uh, when you say about 95% of that traffic is direct, well, um, when Googlebot crawls, it's not sequential. Um, it it uh, copies a page down, goes away, comes back uh, in, in a little while after that page has um, been um, massaged and, and put into place and, uh, uh, and they, they pull, down, pull down another page, linking from that page. Um, and also all of that would be viewed as direct traffic. Um, yeah, uh, Marie was saying that she's been creating lots of, uh, lots of nice content, but it wasn't, uh, it wasn't ranking. Could it be that finally, um, Google is taking notice of your site, um, and suddenly started to rank? That's one, that's one thought. Uh, the other thought is, um, ah, hang on, 95% of the traffic is direct, so it's unlikely to be that. Um, it could be that your, uh, your article has been, uh, has been, um, linked to, um, because people like it and people have been coming along from social media. Um, the in Google Analytics, direct is a pain in the bum, shall we say? Um, it's um, it says Google can't really be bothered to figure out where it's coming from. It could be coming from anywhere that is not in the other uh, not in the other uh, categories. Um, it can be from, uh, typically it can be from social media, although there's a social media section within um, within Google Analytics. So, you know, but it can well come from, uh, uh, fr from uh, social media. Uh, it can come from the obvious things, that, that the obvious idea that um, the, uh, the site has been uh, bookmarked and people are coming back to it. Um, it can be if you send out an email newsletter and people uh, and, and people like it uh, and people like the look of what you're what you've linked to and they click on it unless you've actually got your uh, URL um, tagged properly to, uh, to to identify it to identify that traffic it will just be popped into direct so um, it could be all sorts of things. Um, now, I noticed that um, Michael Martin has, and others have talked about IP addresses. Um, you get into all sorts of nasty things like server log files, which really is probably not uh, um, not going to want to get involved with. Um, my feeling is that I would like to go down the route of making sure that all of the links that are being made to the site on things like email and social media um, um, postings have got a, a properly UTC tagged, um, so you can tell what they what they are, uh, what what the traffic is. Um, otherwise, I guess you might be getting spam bots and stuff um, without. Without seeing it, it's difficult to tell. But there, there, they are a few um, inconclusive, perhaps, recommendations. Um, I, you know, I wonder whether um, I, I wonder what happened. Actually, I've just noticed. I thought it said I'd read this as today. I got six hundred and thirty-three units instead of four hundred. It actually says twenty-two thousand comma space 633 so uh it sounds as if something strange is going on um yeah uh you can you can do all sorts of things within google analytics to, to filter out spam bots and whatever uh i'm not 
qualify, or at least I, my memory is not good enough to tell you exactly what to do. Um, uh, if you if you do think that these could be spam bots, then do a bit of googling. There's all sorts of advice out there about how to block them. Excellent. Thank you, uh, David. All right, let's go to number 10 on our run list. This one from Russ Reff, and um, it's titled Physical Silos with Parent-Child Relationships. Um, Russ said, uh, is there any benefit uh, in creating physical silos with parent-child relationships if there is already internal linking? Um, he said, uh, slash topic, slash topic, slash article underscore one. And the third line is uh, slash topic slash article underscore two. Um, yeah, it's versus and uh, slash topic. Um, oh, yeah, okay, so yeah, all right. Um, yeah, what, what do you see here, guys? Sorry about that. Sorry for the bad read. Um, I think if you were starting from scratch, going down the the first set of first set route would be best. Um, you say if there's already internal linking, um, so this is pre-existing. Um, I wouldn't. Um, I wouldn't change it. I would just carry on the way it is because although the first lot is better than the second lot, in my opinion, uh, it's probably not that much better than the second lot to risk messing about with the structure of your site. Yeah, I agree. I think Ross might be overthinking this. Um, I take a similar view as David and it's about you know, how do you want to manage things? How do you want to structure your site so that it's easier to manage um, rather than anything about SEO as such or about linking between different contents? Um, I think the whole silo thing is to a certain extent a conceptual thing. Um, whereas I think this is more about how you structure sort of nitty gritty of it. Okay. All right. So uh, we'd right to move on to the next. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Tucky and David. Um, Ross Raffin, uh, this one's titled Internal Links from a Pillar Page um, to a Blog. Now, I was thinking, you know, if Tim Capper, uh, Tim Capper wasn't sure what a pillar page was, but if it had been a pillow page, you probably have half a clue. Um, oh, goodness me. I don't know. Um, yeah, the reverse is also true. So I think we already discussed pillar pages, um, the one that you mentioned before or last week <coughs> was so, for example, on guides, and I think you had used cashmere or something. So, um, yeah, it makes sense. You So... Obviously, in your Kashmir guide, along the way, you've listed <coughs> all the different types of Kashmir and those have internally linked to the particular Kashmir category pages on site. But it also makes sense that you can, um, on those individual landing pages for those types of Kashmir or whatever, you know, they're made up of thread counts or whatever, you can then actually put us you know see cashmere guide um for more information you can even you can even use a an internal jump so that they can actually click through to the more more information on that particular that particular part of the guide referencing the actual category page that they've come in from yeah it makes sense it's fine excellent Okay, let's move on to number 12. I think this is our last question tonight. Another one from Ross Raffin. 
Uh, he said, uh, what exactly is the problem with keyword cannibalization? He said, let's assume for a moment that um, click-through ratio slash bounce rate slash dwell time are not search engine optimization fa factors. Uh, what exactly is the problem with keyword cannibalization? The problem with keyword cannibalization, right, is essentially when a page that you is is not a landing page it's not optimized for you know uh, it's just say it's just a content page actually overtakes your main page that you wanted to be ranking for that particular keyword right well, so people are searching that keyword they land on your content page which is actually good content although they may abandon that page because that page was not what they were actually looking for. They wanted to purchase something rather than read a guide to it at that point. Mm -hmm. So um, that, that that is what can happen. Um, okay. Anybody else? Right. I've got a feeling I know what's coming up next. Yep. It's thank you for watching time. We've done it again. We've answered all of the questions uh, um, that were discussed on the uh, uh, Dumb SEO Questions Facebook uh, group. Um, I can't go without uh, thanking people like uh, Michael Martinez and uh, George G, um, Brendan Michelin, um, and, and so many others. Um, I'm sure I've missed some. I won't miss um, here uh, uh, on our panel, uh, Tim Kappa, Masataki Waisa, um, and, um, oh dear, what is it, David Rosam, <laughs> Jackie. Um, all right, we'll be back at the same time next week um, to do this uh, all again. Thank you um, for uh, uh, being with us. And... Uh,